rolling on this 172nd Airfix Spitfire Mark 1 build. First steps I'm going to do is see what we can do with this cockpit. I'm going to rework the seat a little bit, add some seat belts maybe, and then I'm going to see if I can split the canopy. And if I can, I'm going to separate this uh, side door and lower it. A tricky part to rework in this one piece canopy. We're going to be separating the windscreen from the main canopy and the rear canopy section from the main canopy section while still trying to preserve the canopy frame lines. I'll try to use a razor saw to separate it and if that didn't work out I may have to add back in some of the canopy frame. So I realized my special hobby Seafire 47 kit came with extra clear parts for a standard canopy. So what I did was check to see if it fit with the Airfix kit. So it's a little bit big, you can see here, but that's okay because I actually want it to fit over the rear section of this part here. So being a little bit bigger I think actually will work. So what I can do is just using this tape as a guide I'll separate the canopy from the windscreen here with a razor saw and also the rear portion from the main canopy as well. And then I'll basically use these two parts from the Airfix kit and replace the main canopy with that piece from the Special Hobby Kit. Should work out great. There we go. Cut a little bit more. But I'll just say carve that off, sand it down, should be fine. There we go. Perfect. Didn't even mess up the little part that represents the rear view mirror. So we should be in good shape. I'll cut off that app portion and then we'll fit it to the fuselage and make sure we're all good. So now we can test fit those parts. Uh, it looks pretty good there. So these are the original, let's show you, uh, Airfix kit parts cut away from the main canopy section. And then here is the extra special hobby canopy that will fit, again, a little bit wider, will fit right here. Not bad. That'll allow me to open up the fuselage entrance door here, pose that open, and give a little more light into the cockpit so when we detail the cockpit, you'll be able to see that a little bit better. So that should work out pretty good. Now I recognize that most of you guys probably won't have an extra special hobby kit laying around where you can just take the parts from. Uh, you can order uh, aftermarket vacuum form canopies but they're kind of a pain to deal with sometimes so uh, but don't worry if, uh, if you don't want to go through the hassle just use that one piece canopy it'll still look great so separating that canopy is probably the hardest part of the whole thing now with that done I'm gonna go ahead and cut this door that way I can pose it in the open position I'll add a little more detail to it and then we can uh, get into painting the cockpit parts Now I got that entry door separated, but you can see here it's pretty dang thick. I'll just make a new one out of sheet styrene. Now I've cut a new door out of sheet styrene. So I'll take this thin strip styrene and actually create the rib detail on the door. So there, now new cockpit door. You can see here the one on the left is quite a bit thinner much more like a good scale thickness versus the one from the kit. Pretty dang thick. So that should work well. Now all the kit parts are actually pretty nice if you're just doing a quick build, but um, I was gonna add a little more detail. The rear bulkhead is decent. I don't think I need to do anything to that other than take a look at what kind of mounts I need for the seat belts. Uh, the kit seat here, you can see the sidewalls are a little bit thick so I'll sand those down 
and then again the instrument panel here really has nothing on it the kit would call for a decal to be added but I think I'll go ahead and make a new instrument panel with some bezels out of sheet styrene just to give a little depth dimension to the instrument panel so I thought about reworking the kit seat just by sanding down the sides but as I got to looking at the seat back cushion and kind of the overall lack of detail on it I figured hey why not just make another one so using the same techniques I described in a previous video on how to make your own scratch built seats I just took a little evergreen sheet and a little bit of strip and scratched out the seat and the seat cushion I also removed the headrest from the kit part add a little bit of this armor plating you can see there in white and then put the headrest back on so looks a lot better than the kit seat and I'll probably add some foil seat belts as well so I went ahead and made some foil seat belts you can see here adds a lot more dimension to the seat I described those in a previous video so you can check that out if you want to do this you're on your own quite a bit different from the kit seat so next, using a micro punch and die set from Waldron, combined with the kit decal part, I'll punch out some instrument bezels, probably do a main cluster, and then do a couple individual ones. And then I'll just put that cluster and the individuals onto the kit part, which is, as you can see, flat, just intended for a 2D decal to be added. Probably a bit tough to see, but you can see I've got the main cluster punched out here. I've also got four individual bezels punched out. And then you can see the leftover circles that came from the instrument bezels. I can use those to add a little detail, along with some of the little just tiny pieces of strip here. I can add them around to represent switches and things like that. That'll just add a little dimension depth to the instrument panel. So when we paint it and uh, maybe dry brush it a little bit, it looks a lot better than just a 2D decal. So that's about all the modifications we need to do to this thing. You can see here the instrument panel. To me, it looks a lot better by just adding a few simple plastic bits to it. And you can see the cockpit seat here. A lot better as well. And it'll certainly look a lot better once we get some paint on it, which we can start doing here in just a little bit. Now that we got uh, the major modifications done, we'll start slapping some paint on this thing. So I'll just describe the painting technique I'm going to use. It's, it's what I have in the Painting with Dimension video that I posted a while back. I'm just going to start off with a, a black base on all the cockpit parts. Uh, then I'll come back with a cockpit green um, on all of everything. I'll add an oil wash to it to get a little uh, dirt in the ditches, I call it, and to highlight some of the detail. Then I'll come in after that dries, and I'll take a lightened coat of that cockpit green color, and I'll spray it in the uh, recessed areas just to kind of bring a little extra um, contrast to the parts. Now I'll brush paint all the finer details. So I'll just work through all the successive colors until I have all the cockpit parts painted.
So now I've got the interior components all painted up. I'll just give you a quick look here at the fuselage sidewalls and the new cockpit seat looks a whole lot better now than the kit seat and there's the instrument panel you can see far better than uh, that decal all right with all that complete we can then install it into the fuselage close things up then add the wings Okay, got the main components all built up. It actually goes together pretty well. Uh, there were only a few issues that I had with regards to the fit. You can see here there was a gap. I added a little strip of sheet styrene just to fill that in. And one other small gap right here at the trailing edge of the wing, right at the root. Uh, it was a tiny little gap, maybe an eighth of an inch. I also filled that with sheet styrene. But all in all, really good fit. So that finishes up the major portions of the construction. I did attach the windscreen and the aft canopy section. I also masked them in preparation for airbrushing. So I think I'll stop there and we'll divide this build into two parts. First part will get us up to this point, and then part two I'll make that'll take us through the airbrushing, uh, decaling, weathering stages. So I hope you found part one video a little bit informative, somewhat enjoyable. If you like this kind of content, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Also uh, click the notifications bell so you'll get an update on when I post a part two of this Airfix Spitfire video build. And leave me some comments, maybe what you liked, what you didn't like about part one, that way I can make some changes as I progress into the part two of this build.